at long last we're going to, pulling up to the museum itself yeah, apparently more than one entrance there's a big brass cannon Sorry we're closed. Sorry we're closed. I have to check what the hours are. I hope they open up for us. Just like the uh, guard told me, it's not quite 12 o'clock yet, but interestingly enough, I told you about John Browning just a few minutes ago, but uh, here's the plaque. Because for years, they called this the uh, Browning Museum. The great American father of modern firearms. He was quite a man. If you get a chance, read up on him. He was from Utah and he was a Mormon. And he was a genius. Like ourselves. And on the other side of the door is another plaque to the memory of John Browning. This is one of the older military museums. I think it's the second oldest. There are some excellent displays here, but this is a metalworking display, and uh, I love this big mural on the wall. And in front of it here, a large planer. It must be at least 12 foot long. Cincinnati. There's a cutting tool. This is an interesting picture of these Confederate prisoners in 1863 taking an oath of allegiance. Here's a little view of caissons and cannons that were made here. Here's a beautiful brass cannon. Quite a selection of handguns. Everyone has a number on it and can be looked up in the directory. German artifacts, including a nice Luger. Military weapons of all kinds. Here's a scale model replica of the buildings here on the island. And some large pictures of uh, the buildings under construction. Yeah. 
Here's some of the hardware that was used on the doors. Rock Island Arsenal. And there's the lock mechanism. All brass. No plastic. There were many items manufactured here besides guns, for instance, leather goods like these outfits for fencing and a uh, reel for wire, juice extractor, ammo boxes, and these leather cases for uh, browning water cooled machine guns. And in this case, Things like spurs and uh, stirrups and metals, canvas goods, all of these things were manufactured here. Here's a cart, ammo cart or something from 1940, silverware, there's one of the original dies for stamping the fork. Canteens, mess kits, bayonets. Again, the leather work, so an awful lot of leather work. There's something for a Humvee, a door. Saddles, they had a foundry, so they made stoves. It's a coal heater and a gun rack. Long guns and then pistols up on the top. There's a man with the original patterns for this rack. Originally power was supplied to the shops by this uh, teledynamic system of cables and belts that came uh, delivered the power from the river and then eventually a powerhouse was made that was hydroelectric to replace that telodynamic deal which must have had tremendous power loss with all the bearings and shafts and cables Some people come here to study the guns, and then you can look up a number on the gun. For instance, uh, 6874, and remember the color, and you can uh, look then at the directories here, find the, the color, and what book it's in, and open the book. Well, these are grenade launchers, which I'm not too interested in, but uh, there's all the information on them. So if you want to study, come here without your wife or children so you can concentrate. I'm like you, I'm interested in these uh, pieces of equipment here. And this particular one was a boring uh, device. There's the gun stock with four drills. Nice little oilers, like my steam engines or my hit and miss engines. Flat belts. There's the kind of lacing that I've talked about or I've shown you in the South Bend book. Everything driven from shafts. Controllers were down here, levers and pedals. There were probably thousands of machines like this here in the armory. They did a lot of woodworking here. 
This is a elaborate field desk. Probably set up in a tent someplace in Timbuktu. Note these steel beams here are riveted long before we had welders. their own magazine or newspaper here called the Arsenal Record. Uh, the women are sewing some kind of canvas cases. Making gun carriages. And in the 30s they were still making uh, packs for the horses to carry the artillery. This stuffed horse is here since 1916 and it was used to display and to fit the harness and other accoutrements that were manufactured here during that era. You can see the old horse is getting in pretty sad shape. Here's a stitching horse. These are things that were used in manufacturing here and a, a cutting machine for leather. Foot operated and a riveting machine. Here's some of the other things they made, all the little kits that the uh, soldiers would carry. And here's the holsters. That would be the, uh, the wooden model of what the thing is supposed to fit. And that's the finished holster. I drove by this uh, mansion here that was the, uh, uh, they called it Quarters One, and it was for the head honcho here, the head officer, Rodham, and it was equipped with this beautiful furniture. Some of it made right here on the island, because they had extensive carpentry shops. There's a whole bunch of uh, pictures here showing what it originally looked like. Yes, and I don't think they allowed any enlisted men in there. This plaque shows all of the different occupants of Quarters One over the years. It's off limit to the public. There's Charles Lindbergh with uh, the Colonel, Colonel King in 1927, made a tour of the island. There are plenty of guns here from the Civil War era, as well as newer guns, a complete selection of uh, M1 carbines like I used to have. Matter of, fine, matter of fact, mine was marked Rock Island Arsenal.
here's a Navy revolver and these were uh, captured from the American Indians. They, they like to put these brass tacks on their guns as well as this yellow boy Winchester with the brass tacks on the stock. Oh, yeah. That's an 1866, 44 caliber. Nice variety of Tommy guns. Remember when we shot one of those out at Buffalo Rock, Russ? That was a kick. And I think uh, those are grease guns there, I'm not real sure. Mm -hmm. You see a Sten you see a Sten gun any place? No, I didn't. Here's an interesting display of some of the earlier mechanisms of uh, a match lock, wheel lock. and the flint lock. If you like pistols of all kinds, you like coming here. And you do like pistols if you're watching this. These are Springfield 1903 models. And they were manufactured here in this arsenal. And in fact, the building that I'm standing in uh, produced the receivers for these guns. And there's a picture of it. You can see all of the uh, machinery belt driven. And the receivers they were making looks like this. And there are some of the uh, drilling machines. But I've told you in other videos about the bowl of the woods and uh, the cartoons. And you can just see the bowl standing someplace in there between the belts, observing the workers. Recognize the pillar here as the pillar here. In this case, from the inspection department, are some samples of the tools they use, including a surface finish comparator, which I've shown in some of my videos, and uh, radius gauge, one, two, three block, and brown and sharp clamp. Micrometer, and there's a Gerstner box with some various machinist tools. Here's a Gatling gun on display. They did not make them here and has no connection with the museum other than it's a curiosity. But this one is a Spanish caliber that was uh, to be exported. Yeah, Custer could have used that. They printed millions of targets here at the arsenal. There's some samples. There's large rotary presses. Those are more modern. There's rolls of targets and even one of the original printing plates. Note how thick the walls are here, this, these limestone walls. Must be about 30 inches. Here are five Sharps carbines that have been identified, and they were here in the armory, with the uh, Battle of the Little Bighorn. And they did uh, scientific studies here on the cartridges 
and the firing pins to determine which artifacts uh, that they dug up, the, the shell casings, matched uh, these various areas on the battlefield. For instance, these guns were used, where you see those uh, red letters, Amazing detective work. My brother had one of these uh, Sharps guns when we were kids. And this one here has little holes, and it's identified as one that was used by the Indians, where they put the tacks. Now oh, that's not a Sharps there. That's a Winchester uh, 1873. This is a map of the island from uh, 1870. And you can see the stone shops from that time. This island originally uh, was the home of uh, Fort Armstrong from 1816 to 36, and here's a model of the uh, fort. And some of the original timbers. And we're leaving the island. Here's the guardhouse. Going over the bridge into where are we going? Moline or Rock Island? I forgot. You know, this is a quad cities here. Moline, Rock Island, Davenport, and Bentendorf. And across the river we go. And thanks for joining us on this little uh, journey today to the Rock Island Arsenal.